Well, this is the next step in experimenting with some electroculture and some magnet culture in my garden. Today I'm going to be making three different types of aerials and we're going to see how they affect the growth in the garden. There are quite a few different options available for putting some kind of aerial or some kind of magnetic force in your garden. And I'm going to do the three probably most common seen ones and I'm going to put them in three different garden beds and I have currently got some mustard seeds that I have sprinkled in as a green crop. The upside to them is they're kind of blanket um, sewn across all three garden beds that I'm going to be trying this in and they've all been in the exact same amount of time so it'll be really fascinating to see if this has any influence. Stick around to the end to see the first week's update. The first aerial I'm making is probably the most complex. Um, I have used these uh, extendable fishing poles. They're made from a fiberglass product. These are particularly cheap ones that I got from AliExpress. Uh, and they extend officially up to six meters but when you extend them all the way out the tips are very very bendy so I've only extended them probably about three or four meters and I have the joints keep slipping down so I'm going to tape those so that they don't keep slipping down just with some really strong black tape it's essentially like an electrical tape but it's quite a bit bigger and then once they're all nice and secure I have got here some copper wires and I just again got these really cheaply on AliExpress and I'm just going to cut those in half so I have enough of them to make one of these aerials. Now if this was a long term project I think I would use some kind of hose clamp or something to attach these at the bottom. But as it's only an experiment I'm going to use some more of this black tape which does hold up surprisingly well for a good season or two outside. So I'm going to tape these and then when you spread the wires out you just need to kind of make them look relatively even. Some people will add spirals and all sorts of things to this. Some people add a directional magnet to it. This is just going to be a bog standard really basic pointy hedgehog looking thing. Now I just need to attach a piece of wire that's insulated so it's not going to short out all the way down the pole. So I have some insulated I think it's um wire for doing car electrics anyway go run that down the pole attach it to the copper at the top and leave a snake of it at the bottom that I'll be able to hook up to eventually a piece of galvanized wire that I'm just going to run along the length of the bed. The theory with the really tall antennas is that they push right up into the areas that have got high voltage up in the sky and they join the earth all the way up there and allow a flow of electrons and the reason it has so many tiny little pointy bits on the top is the pressure gets smaller and smaller and tighter and tighter up there and it allows them to pop off the end and that can create a current flow which I find really interesting that it can be so passive but so effective. I have watched a video of someone sending a drone up with a very small antenna and a very fine wire and they managed to get enough current to run a couple of little very basic engines um, down on the earth. So I'll link to one of those down below because I found them really interesting. Now when it comes to installing this, I have these waratahs all the way around the uh, garden holding up this fence. Waratahs, they're also known as T-posts or Y-posts. A lot of places call them different things. Anyway, I'm going to zip tie this onto here partly because I know it's nice and stable and partly because it saves me digging a hole. I've just run this um, piece of galvanized wire along the garden. It's not pointing particularly north and south, it's probably pointing sort of a northwest to southeast sort of direction. My gardens unfortunately don't run perfectly north to south but this is on the southern end of that um, pointing towards the northern end it's just not running perfectly north-south and I don't know a great deal about these voltmeters but I decided to stick on millivolts and see what comes up and as you can see there's a definite difference between the earth and the wire coming down from the pole. So at the end of this video I'll show you where we're at with the mustard growing around these wires one week on. The second aerial I'm going to make is one that you see a lot in social media at the moment and is the one that I'm most dubious about whether it would actually work. There's a lot of discussion whether you're if you're in the northern hemisphere you're supposed to wind it clockwise and if you're in the southern hemisphere you're meant to wind it anti-clockwise but no one says whether that's from the bottom looking up or from the top looking down. And when I've listened to a few lectures from Yannick Van Dorn, he's a French guy that knows a lot more about this electroculture than what I do. Uh, he says that um, anything curling up should, 
either should work because um, there are energy fields that go both ways and it doesn't matter if you're in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere but either way I'm pretty sure I have wound this clockwise anti-clockwise from the top from the top down it's anti-clockwise pretty sure and all it is is a garden stake it's not very long it might be three foot long and some soft copper wire that I have and I just started at the top, pointed it out, wound it down and left a bit of wire out the bottom that I can poke in the ground. Now to install it, all I did was rammed it in the end of the garden bed and poked the copper wire into the ground beside it. The theory with this aerial is that it just um, kind of gathers the energy that's around it and allows there to be some flow from the top to the bottom. I don't quite understand, like the big tall aerial that science makes sense to me this little short copper one it seems a little woo woo so that's why I'm not sold on it but it'll be really interesting to see what the results are now interestingly it's the one I was most dubious about at working but it is the one that makes the biggest difference on the voltmeter so I'll be fascinated to see how it affects the plant growth I know it's not very tall and again also we've got these trees along past this other big aerial as well so I'm not sure how the trees are going to affect things or if they will at all. I'm hoping they're far enough away that these will still be effective. And the third and final uh, aerial that I'm doing is a magnetic one. I've got these uh, little round magnets that have got a hole through the middle. I've marked which way is south, which if you've not done that before, all you need to do is grab a compass and sit it on your hand, point the magnets towards it, and whichever end of your magnet that the north end of your compass points to, that is the south end of the magnet. And then you can just mark it with a white dot. So to stop these getting lost in my garden, I have used some of that black tape again and just taped it together. And other than that, all I need is a length of this galvanized wire and a compass to tell me which way is north. I have started with the magnets. They are with the end with the white dot, which is the south end, pointing towards actual magnetic north. So I've just set my cell phone down here because I forgot to bring my normal compass. Um, and I'm lining them up so that the wire does run perfectly from south to north. So I've got the south end of the magnet pointing towards the north and the wire going through the magnets at the south end pointing towards the north. And then I've just had to peg it down because it kept trying to bend back up. And the thought with this magnetic one is that the galvanized wire is steel and so it will magnetize all the way along the wire. And having seen how much magnets affect the growth of my seedlings, I really will be fascinated to see whether this magnetic wire all the way along in the garden uh, affects the plant growth the same as well. The one thing with this is it's really important that you've got your magnets facing the right direction and that the wire is running directly north to south. Otherwise the magnetism just won't work in the right direction and uh, it just generally won't work. So this is the one that you have to be quite accurate with your placement of things. So there are my three different aerials and I have left them for a week and I have come back with a camera to show you what difference I've noticed over a week. Now you can see here with the one that I was most dubious about, um, there seems to be quite a marked line around it where the plants are doing significantly better. These are some plants from within that circle and these are the plants just outside of that circle. There's quite a significant size difference which is fascinating to me because I really didn't think this one was going to do anything. As for my big aerial that cost me more money and a lot more effort and it looks way more impressive, the results aren't quite so obvious. There definitely does seem to be a bit more growth closer to the wire than away from the wire and there is definitely some patches that are doing a lot better than other areas but there are other areas that I would have thought I would have thought it would have been more obvious. Um, overall I think it's improved the growth but I'm going to leave it for another week and let you know. And then my magnetic one again it does seem to be making a difference but then there's another patch further along the bed that's also doing as well as the stuff up against the wire but then in between it there are some patches that aren't growing well so I'm not 100% sure but it does seem to be doing slightly better. In another week I will do another update so don't you worry. It'll be fascinating to see whether this actually makes much of a difference. 
If you want some tips on getting your seeds out of the ground really quickly, check out this one on using some magnets underneath your seedlings and which way up you need to have them so that you get the best results. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found it as fascinating as I have and I will see you in the next one.